Hey, it's China Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. It's the middle of summer and we're drinking stout. That's, I've used that joke before, I don't care. I'm going to do it again, it's my YouTube channel. You know, that's how it is. I had to do it again, it wouldn't be a summer without, without pulling out a summer stout. <laughs> Especially as we're about to go into another string of super hot days yep. here. Pull it out stout, great. Pull it out. There we go. All right, so you're going to tell me more about this and I'm going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. While we talk? Yeah, so this is another derivation of my uh, sort of house stout recipe that I'm going mm -hmm. for. And in the summertime, I'm trying to create a stout here that is extremely approachable, extremely drinkable, delivers at some level the stout qualities that you want, but is not overwhelming. It's not going to uh, wear you out. It's not going to make you feel heavy um, like maybe other versions of stout. You know, So this is loosely based off of an oatmeal stout recipe. Let me just give you the quick rundown. This is a 75% Maris Otter, and it's 11% flaked oats. And then it's about 3.7% of roasted barley, English chocolate, and some medium crystal, which is at about 50 to 60 Love of Bond English crystal. Mm -hmm. And then 1.8% of um, special roast. So it's about 13 pounds altogether, the recipe. So the original gravity on this baby is 1054. Finishing gravity is 1014, so the total ABV is just a, sh uh, a, sh a shy over 5%. Okay. Um, this was 50% um, tap water, 50% RO, just to sort of get rid of some of the chlor extra chloride. Um, it's got a heavy dose of sulfate just to balance out the chloride. It's about 12 grams of calcium sulfate and a little bit of lactic acid because in this beer too, when I do some of these stouts, I, I hold back the roasted grains and I mash just the yellow grains. Yep. So a little acid to help that out, and then I top mash and recirculate uh, to get the color and the flavor out of those roasted grains. Uh, this baby had just uh, one ounce of Willamette at 60 minutes, 7% alpha acid. It's a little something different in a stout for me, but that's what I had on hand. And also an ounce of uh, EKG to give it a little bit of that. Hey, this is an English sort of <laughs> driven stout at 10 minutes, but at 5% alpha acid, the EKG is the thing of thing. Yep. But the only other thing I'd like to add to this as far as evolution is this is the West Yorkshire okay. Y yeast. So I said when we were picked that out of the lineup before that I would like to go back to some of my older recipes, my English ale recipes, and start throwing in West Yorkshire. So here we've got West Yorkshire in this beer. Tell me what you think and just... Um, you can look forward to, there's another beer in process right now that I got a pitch of, a repitch of this yeah. West Yorkshire yeast in it too, another English recipe oh, of mine man. Well, coming down the pike. I don't have many criticisms, that's for sure. Um, on the nose, um, notes of roast, notes of coffee, a uh, small amount of chocolate, but really more roasty. You know, like, and I know you don't like coffee, we've talked about this, but... <laughs> Darn, this is like... Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, really, do you not like coffee? No, it, I don't like coffee. But I am, yeah. I'm, I'm a... Yeah, you're, I, you're not just, you're just not brewing the right coffee, bro. Well, that maybe um, that's what it is. But yeah, I, I was digging the aroma, and as you can see that uh, my pint is halfway gone. Um, everything is melding so nicely in this beer. I don't think there's, you know, any real flaw to it. You know, there's nothing like weird or off about it. It all kind of like, yeah, I am tasting the roast. I'm tasting a little bit of the caramel that like that's in there. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it finishes clean. It has some, a little bit of the, the roastiness that, that uh, lingers on. It makes me want to, you know, drink a little bit more. Um, hop presence is, uh, you know, it's not uh, overwhelming, but uh, there is a little sense of it. There's a little bit of uh, that EKG uh, uh, magic. You know, a little bit, a uh, little herbal, a little, uh, little yeah. floral. Um, I don't know, man. I could, yeah, this would be a good one. This is a good one. This yeah. is a good house style, bro. I'm, you know, after the, the Pilsner, like, sadness, I want to, like, I want to come over and, and say, like, yeah, you nailed this. This yeah. is great. This is, um, so for me, the funny thing about the components, like the chocolate malt, the roasted barley, neither one of them are really saying, yeah, this is a roasted barley stout, or this is, right, it's, it's just, but there's enough there that every sip you have, you're like, I need to have another sip in yeah. order to, like, keep that Learn flavor more coming. About it. It, it, it's really like walking that line between om almost being, like, not enough of, of some sort of flavor profile. Yeah. But then enough, and I, for me, as I drink it, it's just, 
once you get halfway through a pint, you've, you're really sort of now into it and you've got a sustained flavor and, and you're just drinking it to keep that, the good times rolling. Well, what's the one note you want to like, you know, bring up in this? Cause I, like I said, it yeah. kind of all melds well. Yep. Um, I, so I will back up my statement on sure. there. There's, it was a little like high. I don't know if it was just because it came out of the keg. Yep. Well, the carbonation was a little bitey. Yep, like yep. when I was drinking it, but other than that, yep. it was just... I think, I think that might actually be a function of maybe adjusting the <laughs> overall pH of the beer. Okay. Right? And, and just getting the pH up a little bit. Um, certainly, we could experiment with that with a little um, baking soda in a glass just to see how that rounds out some of the flavors. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying there with that. Um, you know, I, I've been rapidly carbonating it, and I do tend to notice that when you really quickly force carbonate you tend to make some carbonic acid which yeah. does sort of acid but that'll settle out that'll rebuffer over time as the levels adjust to more serving level um so yeah that's so what what i really want out of a stout like this is i just want to have um a noticeable presence of of that roast character i want you to fundamentally realize you're drinking a something that's leaning more stout than just like a really dark brown ale yeah um i don't want really strong toast notes but i just want all of those the caramel and the roasted toast flavors to just be sort of uh, playing with you and not trying to assert themselves on you uh, so for me you know it's a little bit high in alcohol for like what i would consider a true session beer but it's something that for me i just want a beer that you can drink three or four of them and not feel palate fatigued at all. Mm. But I want you to be able to identify it as being a roasted malt forward beer. Yep. You know, it's not a dry Irish stout, which is super roasted barley. It's not like a real like oatmeal cookie, oatmeal stout with a with a like a strong noticeable raisin caramel note to it. It's not that. Um, it's sort of just living in this weird almost. Um, robust porter dry stout uh, you know the venn diagram is somewhere yeah, in the middle sure, there right sure, sure. but the, those all those styles sort of you know what is stout really when you look at the list of stouts and all those stouts have very different flavor yeah. descriptors yep. and so for as a home brewer to me like this is like stout but with none of that other just oatmeal foreign export milk um dry whatever it's just stout yeah right yeah um and the color i mean it could be a tad darker but again i'm trying to go a little bit light on the overall because it's it's a summer stout as well <laughs> right i mean it's a summer focused stout but uh, yeah i guess yeah you're, you're right um so what would you do differently if you were to do it again more think, ro roasted barley i think i might amp up the roasted barley just yeah. a touch more or change with change the uh the love bond of the roasted barley or the chocolate malt, right? Just get a little bit darker or something with those, hmm. you know? Um, I maybe even upping the, maybe not changing that stuff, but just upping the special roast. Because yeah. that brings, a, that brings yeah. a, a, you know, a nuttier biscuit thing to it. Yeah. But, but I've noticed too, when you're using Maris Otter, I, I, I get a, fr I think you can get too biscuity for me. Mm. Some of these beers get too biscuity and then they sort of, they don't become cloying, but they become just sort of saturating on the palate. And again, being a drinker that I want to drink when it's 90 plus degrees out, I, I want to have something that's interesting, but not fatiguing. And I think if we push some of those flavors too far, it becomes that way. What was the percentage of the roasted barley again? 3.7%. 3.7. Yeah. So you bump it up to five. Which is half a pound in the recipe. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very good. All right. Well, I'm very happy with it. So thanks. Th you know, I thought you said so, coming I know you through. I know that. I, I think mean, that's what's like, yeah, painting the 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 blending the palette together. That's, that's true. what's doing it. That's really true. Because um, I think some of these other yeast strains might accentuate, you know, one, one piece the or the other. Right. I think the minerality of the water is coming through the West Yorkshire too. Hmm. A little bit. I think yep. that's what some of the, the play on the bite and the maybe the acidity quality too. There's a, there's a minerality to it that uh, that stands out to yeah. me. Yeah, I think. Yep. So how long has it been in the keg as I make a big mess? Uh, six days. Six days. Okay. Yeah. Five days. Five or six days. I know. In your pursuit of the house stout, I think that uh, this is a good next step yep. for sure. So I don't know. I'm happy with it. Again, this uh, everything blended well. There wasn't. It just 
with everything you told me in that recipe, I was like, yes, they're all they're all playing together. Yeah. Like in the orchestra. Super harmony. You know, that's exactly right. I'm like, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, all right, good. How stout? Summer stout. You know, you can even drink these during the the hot the dog days of summer. No mm -hmm. big deal. No big deal. Um, so if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. You know, perfecting house. Uh, beers is a big thing of ours. We, I think we've had that on the list of things to talk about on this channel for a while. Yeah. But like, is that something you'd like to pursue? Like to have like a string of beers, maybe it be three, maybe it be four, that uh, you've perfected the recipe and this is your particular take on a style that you have on a tap, you know, for anyone who comes over at any point in time ready to go. You know, is that something that, uh, a part of the homebrew pursuit. Something that people know they're only going to get when they come to your That's place right. and drink your homebrew. You're like, and like, you know what? That guy, that dude, has a really great house stout. I'm going to pay him a visit, see what's up. Um, so give us a thumbs up if you like this. Subscribe to our channel. We'll talk more about house beers and, um, you know, and just uh, homebrew with us because who else are you going to homebrew with? I don't know. Probably half a. I don't know, half a million other <laughs> home brewers on YouTube, right? For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, brew on. Cheers.